Okay, liquid mask, check. That's one thing off the to-do list today. Anyway, it's been a minute. What's going on, you YouTube and fools? So today's video is gonna be all about showing you guys the setup, how it works, what I think of it, and if you guys should invest and purchase this for your truck. So uh, let's get into it. Okay guys, so right off the get go, the first thing you can initially see is you actually now, your screen's gonna protrude up just a little bit past your dash. It looks clean, I like it. There's another screen where you can actually get it to where it fits perfectly in here. Um, but I wouldn't go that route. I think this is the screen to get, um, especially for the 2015 and up F-150. Since we got rid of the volume keys, there's only two ways to adjust for volume. And that's gonna be on your steering wheel controls or if you just click right down here and this is gonna be your volume adjust. I do, however, have the Nova launcher, so it does hide your climate control options and your volume options. I'm gonna talk about this later in the video on installing the Nova system. I'll show you guys that because when you install the Nova launcher, it's a custom launcher for this and it hides this, which I kind of like and I think it looks cleaner. And then if you give it a couple seconds, it's just gonna disappear. So there's gonna be two things that you're gonna wanna do immediately after installing this. And obviously before you click it into place, you wanna make sure everything works because now all the buttons that used to be right here are now relocated up top. They all still work. It's actually the factory buttons that you're taking over. The first setting that I'd recommend you change is you're gonna to wanna to make sure your reverse camera's working. If that's not working, or click your button, make sure your front cameras are working the way they should. They're working just fine. But anyway, if it's not working and it's plugged in correctly, you're gonna to wanna to head over to your settings and you're gonna to wanna to go to system. And then from there, you're gonna to wanna to go to factory settings. And your password for this is gonna be 7890. Don't mess with really anything but up here, reversing video format. When you get it, it's gonna be in the CBBS. You want it to be in VGA. But once you change it, hit the save button and then your camera should be fine. So now that your camera is out of the way, the next thing you're obviously gonna to wanna to do is set up your Bluetooth. I'm using an iPhone, so you use Apple CarPlay. There's Android Auto, but I, I don't have an Android, so I can't really help you out, but I'm sure it's the same method. So we're gonna open this up and we're gonna to go to Bluetooth. And the next step here is you're gonna to wanna to go over here to the little chain link, whatever. And you're gonna see previously connected devices. I've already done that. Or you can hit pair new device and that's how you're gonna to wanna to add in your device. But since we've already connected, we're just gonna hit Jim's iPhone. And this is what it does. This is what it does every time you start the truck and it's connecting and this is actually activating your wireless CarPlay. Sometimes it's faster than others, it's not perfect. So now that it connected, as you can see, this is just your basic CarPlay setup. This looks the, this is how it looks on a lot of displays. So anytime I hit the home button, that's my CarPlay shortcut. And the only main apps I really ever use, Maps, Spotify, and Sirius with the CarPlay. Spotify opens it up, Sirius. Now, there's two ways you can obviously play Sirius. You can either play it through here, through CarPlay, or if I go jump back to my console app, which is the Factory Sync 3, and then, boom, I get my Sirius through here. Here's what I like when I run Sirius through the Sync 3 app. I can hit the next buttons and change my stations. But if I'm on here and say I get a text message, then this actually will still, st it'll still play, but then it pops up this app and shows that, hey, I got a text message. And then you actually, you don't have to go back, but I like, if I'm playing Sirius through the Sync 3 app, I just like the Sync 3 app to be up. If I just want to play Sirius though at all the time and not worry about going through the Sync 3 app, then I'll just play my Sirius through the app. It's the same thing. There's no really difference. You just sometimes have to hit go live just to catch you up so you're at live live, but that's not the biggest deal. So usually I'm always just playing my music through CarPlay, but there's one other thing. You can adjust your EQs, right? None of these sound like phenomenal. They sound good, but the factory, I can actually notice a difference from listening to so much music through this, that this EQ, I'll change it, and I, I pretty much just go back from normal to popular. I don't know how to adjust any of those. So when you're playing your actual console sync three app, you're actually getting the EQ settings that Ford gave you and it sounds better. My sub sounds better, 
but when I'm in here, it just doesn't sound as good. Maybe one of you guys know how to dial these in better, but I have no clue how to dial them in. So that's one thing I do notice is running through the console app, since it's the Ford factory settings, is the, I can tell my subwoofer just, it, it hits a little better. It's not that great since it's stock, but it does hit a little better and my, it just sounds better. So I kind of do like running through here, but it's not, it's not that big a deal. Next, a lot of people have been asking about the brightness, the auto brightness feature. Now, up in this upper right-hand corner, you can just click this button, and this gives you three adjustments, just right offhand. But if you want to just actually dial yours in, the one thing I recommend, and if you go to settings, and then go to general, I have my day and night mode. I just switched mine to night. You can put it on auto, and it's going to switch you over. It's brighter. I don't know. I feel like for the most part, I just like dark mode. I just keep mine on night. But that's just kind of your preference. You can do whatever you please. So if I just turn my DRLs on, boom, it thinks it's dark out. It kind of dimmed the screen some. And you can dim it yourself, but honestly, dimming it yourself gets old. So I just always keep mine on night mode. And then in CarPlay as well, you can go to the settings on there. And I do always dark. To me, it's just super bright if it's on the other one. So I just prefer the always dark. Now that we've got that dialed in, go to dimmer and you can choose what your brightness is gonna be during the day. So you can see it is dimming down because I have no lights on on the truck. I don't have my DRLs on or nothing. But if I adjust night, it's not doing nothing. You can't see it because it doesn't believe it's dark out. But if you flip your, your light switch on and now adjust it, now it's dimming it. So I think I keep mine around 12, which is what it came with. And then if you flip your lights off, now you can adjust your day. Just kind of play with that. You'll, you'll kind of fine tune what you like for settings. And pretty much the console app is your Sync 3 app. You have all your controls, looks exactly like Sync 3. When you do switch back and forth apps, like you'll notice now it's not on the station that I just had it on. You have to re-click that. For some reason these two stations are set, but it doesn't show the icon. I had issues with the Sync 3 software doing that before, but I did the update and it fixed it. But now it's like this again. My guess is, is it's probably just something with the communication with this. So everything works the same. The Ford Pass app works. You can do remote start from your cell phone. All of that still works because you take the actual module and stick it on this display. And the other thing that you eliminate now is you've now eliminated wired CarPlay. You can actually still use your factory USB ports, hook up your phone, and play through this. So now your CarPlay is just completely wireless. There's no wired whatsoever. But feature-wise with this display, you don't lose anything other than a whole row of keys, but everything still works. All of these buttons here work. These are going to be your climate control buttons. AC and heated seats still work. If you do have the heated steering wheel, you still got to go into your sync app and adjust it there. You can't actually adjust it on here. You can open this up, which is going to be your climate control shortcuts. Turn it on, off. There's a button for the heated steering wheel, but you can't actually utilize that. Wrigley, what'd you get? Cookie review time. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's, I mean, that's a good cookie. But let's get back into the setup of this. Now that we've got all of the basics kind of covered, the next step you're going to want to think about is Wi-Fi and or a SIM card. If you watch the install video over in the glove box, there is a cord ran to plug in a dedicated SIM card. If you have a data package plan, I do not. So most of the time, I just actually connect to my hotspot from my phone, so I'll just swipe down. This is going to be your Wi-Fi. Usually, I just click and hold. Brings up your Wi-Fi settings. And then I have mine turned off right now, but usually it would pop up. So once you do that, so you can use, you know, your web browser, YouTube TV, YouTube Play Store. That's going to be where you download all your apps. You can use Netflix, but you have to do it through the web browser. Netflix, if you've ever noticed, like when you play it on your cell phone, it automatically auto orientates into landscape mode. Well, it won't do that on here. So you actually have to do it through the web browser. I know I tried Peacock TV to stream Supercross. And I tried it with the app, wouldn't let me download the app, 
and I tried it with the web browser and it would not play through the web browser. Not sure what the deal is with that. And say I'm changing my wallpaper for instance, I'll just email it to myself and then I'll just open up my email and download it from there. I find myself barely using any of these. I hardly use Google Chrome. The wallpapers, I have the wallpaper pack that you can purchase. The last video showed you how to set it up. I downloaded an app. I, call, I downloaded the app called just Gallery from the Play Store. Go into my gallery and here's all my wallpapers. Here's the one that I currently have on. Once you bring this up, hit your little options key and then set as wallpaper and then you can adjust it I just try to get it as best as possible and then once I'm done hit that check mark set wallpaper and you are good your wallpaper is set so let's talk about this Nova launcher factory it's gonna look more like this this is always gonna be up 24 7 obviously this isn't when I hit the home button I have it set to where my Nova launcher is the factory launcher so I can either access my apps from here, which is the factory style. You'll notice how they kind of look. But this is my button for the apps in the Nova Launcher. And these are all customizable. I just set it to my default. When I hit home, it goes to the Nova Launcher. These are the settings for the Nova Launcher. And if you come down here, the first thing that I did upon installing it, select default launcher. You can either do Quick Step or Nova 7. So now, this is what it would look like factory. This, when you hit the home button, that's what you get. That's your app drawer. And there's what I had initially put up. But for me, however, I just, this is up all the time. The Nova launcher just makes sense. So let's go back over to Nova 7, bring up our settings. And we're gonna go to set default, Nova. These icons are not what they come with from Nova. That's your console app, which is Sync3, the app drawer, your EQ settings. And this is only to adjust the EQ settings when you're in CarPlay. If you're using the console app, you actually have to adjust your EQ settings through the factory sound. And then this is the settings of the Nova launcher. So all of these are customizable, the actual icon. I downloaded a custom icon pack from the Play Store. You can just search icon packs and just see what you're feeling. All it is is like images. So to change this image, just click and hold, edit, and then you can change the name, but obviously names I don't have popped up. Just click on this, and then you can do the built-in gallery apps. I downloaded this one called Polycon. And this is literally just tons and tons of just little images that someone created for you to customize what the app looks like. I just went through, took my time, and just kind of picked apart what I thought looked cool. I kind of went for more of just like a dark blue theme. These ones in here, this is the Factory Nova apps. You can go in and change those as well. Go to Images. That's a lot of work to change all of those. I don't really care about that. I just want to customize my main ones and then I also customized those ones, which then I customized those as well. By downloading the Nova launcher though, it just makes it cleaner. It gets rid of the, the whole climate control that's right here, but you can click on it and bring it up, change that, go into a full climate control settings adjustment. But for the most part, I just screw with it down here. And a lot of people have been asking about the microphone on this. It comes with an external microphone to run, and you could run it like up somewhere high or whatever. But right here is going to be your reset button and your microphone. I don't have the external mic. I just literally let it use this. There's nothing you have to adjust in the settings. Uh, I've talked to multiple people, and they all say that I sound really good on it, so I don't think you need to run that external mic. Plus, the external mic you do get is kind of just cheap. But I'm sure it works. Just make sure you have a little tool. This is for the SIM card tray on a cell phone. A lot of cell phones just come with this. It's usually in your box. I have multiples of these, so I just keep one in here. And then if I ever need, if I'm ever having issues with this, you just click this button and it resets it. This is my custom wallpaper that I made for the boot up screen. And first it's gonna boot to the regular and then it's gonna switch to the Nova. And then it's gonna go into connecting to the wireless CarPlay, which it's doing right now. And then it brings up CarPlay. And then I just set my clock, you know, you just click and hold and you can just kind of drag it around wherever you want. Um, I just put it right there so that way it's right above the Raptor icon. 
Wrigley, are you going to the car wash? Okay, truck's clean. It's not completely clean. That's what you gotta deal with when you deal with this touchless. It just doesn't get it completely clean, but we're good. So just to recap, all of your factory items still work. All your factory buttons, everything like that. Your factory USB port works, but like I said, it's, I'm plugged in right now because I'm charging my phone. If I head over, hit the home button, hit my Sync 3 app, and if I go to sources, you'll see my phone's connected. But it's not gonna be for wireless CarPlay. It's just for music only, pretty much. Um, we'll go back to Sirius. I noticed now my two stations popped up that weren't showing up earlier. That's what I'm talking about. A small glitch, but it's it's minuscule. The other thing that I've noticed too is when you throw it in reverse. I just feel like there's a couple second more delay for the camera to pop up than the factory system. Nothing, not a big deal, but just something else I've noticed. In closing guys, that's kind of just the mini rundown slash setting slash tutorial on this thing. I, I really feel like this is the best in-dash display you can get. A lot of people are buying the AutoTech one. This is the same as the AutoTech. AutoTech's just drop shipping it to you as well. So if you buy it from AutoTech, they, you can contact them for support. But you're paying a premium. I paid $700 shipped for mine. If you go through AutoTech, it's well over $1,000. It's literally the exact same thing to a T. Just do your research. I would buy it through AliExpress or however you pronounce it. I don't really have any complaints. The only thing that sucks is it's kind of like a cell phone. You got to reset it every so often. Maybe once a week it glitches out. It's just kind of normal though. I mean, it's like a cell phone. Sometimes I have to reboot my iPhone. Nothing's perfect. The USB ports that are in the glove box that I ran are completely fine. The SIM card is fine. You can get a SIM card and put it in there and then just have data on it 24 seven. I don't. I know some people ask like if you start the truck and what you were playing listening to last time, does it start playing again? Most of the time? No, you got to go back in and click what you want it to play. So that's kind of annoying. Other than that, I don't really have any complaints I can think of off the top of my head. That's all we got for you guys today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns on this display, let me know in the comments. I'll have a wallpaper pack in the link below if you want to purchase my custom wallpaper pack. It's in the other video as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.